salsa. You forgot the sugar. Elsa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
but since my first adventure will be driving through the snow storm tomorrow, I better get some sleep. Oh, of course. I'll show you to your room. I must admit, Sergeant, you are a bit of a surprise to me. I thought all New York City policemen to be Irish. We are. <laughs> Oh, 
you can move that around any way you like. It's perfect. Oh, Hassan. Hello, I'm Elsa von Grossen Nuschen. After variety. I have to come up to see if I can borrow a shovel. A shovel? A shovel. <laughs> oh, a shovel, of course. Well, there's one right outside the door. This is Miss Nikki uh, Cranberry. And this is Ken Delamaze, your director. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Now I'll be off to get that shovel. Oh, I'll go with you. It's off the way down to the bottom of the hill, miss. Snow's as steep as the cliffs of Killarney. I am of solid Bavarian stock, Mr. O'Reilly. Snow is in my blood. But not in your heart, dear Elsa. This lady is the most generous patron of our art alive today. Am I, Ken? Without you, there wouldn't be more than 30 or 40 shows on the Great White Way. She backed 12 last season. Well, I do like to dabble. Now, Ken, suppose you make you and this panel a drink. Elsa will take your luggage up to your room. Northwest guest room, Elsa. Bob and Breeze will be down as soon as they part. Marjorie is trudging up the hill. Soon we'll be all together once more, won't we, Ken? Yes, it will be good to see Bobby and Bernice again. All together. Right, Ken? Yes. <laughs> and when I come back, I will hear all about Hollywood. What it's like. Just dump the garment district in the middle of an orange grove. That's Hollywood. How picturesque! Of course, there is an ocean somewhere. You never saw the ocean? Of course I saw the ocean. I was at a party in Santa Monica one night and someone opened the drapes. Drake? No, thank you. You're about to tell me in the cab which show you were with in Washington. Dewberry. Oh, you know Bob then? Bob. Bob Holden, the choreographer. Oh no, this was the row company. Jimmy Arlen staged it. Uh, and you closed in Washington? No, I left the show in Washington. Not to come up here for a backers audition, I hope. Oh no, I've got other things on the fire. And you're a singer? Dancer? Dancer, mostly. Yes, I sort of thought that when I watched you get off the train. I walk like a duck, you mean. No, you tripped over your suitcase. Sure sign. <laughs> and with whom did you study dance? Well, see, I'm from Chicago. Oh, I know Chicago quite well. Actually, south of there, you know Kankakee? I'm afraid not. I studied there with Natasha Dubovitska. I see. Jeepers, this is a small house, isn't it? Yes. I'll bet they have some small houses in Hollywood. Ostentatious, but swell, yes. <laughs> You live out there? I'm hoping this enterprise will bring me back to New York. You're not working on any movies now? I just finished a picture, Moonlight in Rio. Moonlight in Rio? You shot a movie in Brazil? No, I shot it in Culver City, except for the beach. The beach, I shot in Oxnard. Who's in it? Alice Faye, Dick Powell, Phil Silvers, Ann Miller, Patsy Kelly, George Brent, Lords Melchior, and Hansa Heifetz. Oh, sure, I saw that. You probably did, but it hasn't been released yet. Oh. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go upstairs and into the bathtub. Get rid of some of the Union Pacific Railroad I brought with me. Sure, go ahead. I don't want to look over the lead sheets anyway. See you later. Hi, I'm Admiral Byrd, and I'm lost. This is the North Pole. Boy, what a blizzard. I passed by four penguins on my way up here, and one of them was wearing a polar bear. <laughs> oh, am I kidding? I'm Ed McEwen. This your place? No, I'm Nikki Crandall. Miss Von Gresson just went down the hill to help some others who are stuck. That's us. And a car behind us, and a taxi ahead of us. They'll never make it up the hill, so I decided to hook it. Your boots. The Oriental? Oh, yeah, sorry. You here for the audition? Yes. Right, or? I'm an actress. Great. Guess we'll be working together. You're an actor? What? I'm a comedian. Actually. 
actually. You see how's the pond in there? Are you in it? I had a couple of bits. Yeah. But I just left it a month or so ago. Don't just break you. This is the closet. The coat closet is outside in the hall. <laughs> oh. Definitely 
scares us. It's far more true. Oh, you must be Mr. McEwen to do the only one I've accounted for. I'm your friend, Elsa von Grossenjun. And of course you've met Mrs. Baberstock and Mr. O'Reilly since you rode up with them. Oh, hardly no, Elsa, as Mr. McEwen was riding up front with your driver. I didn't get an opportunity to tell you, Mr. McEwen, that I think it's simply de loon of you to fill in at the last moment like this. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> but, but and this is Miss Nikki Crandon. <laughs> Nikki, darling, I don't believe you've met Miss Bearslaw. Damn! Have a cold, Mr. McEwen. Oh, well, see, there's been a hitch, and I got my dates mixed up. I'm due back in New York. Oh, dear, when? Now. <laughs> <laughs> really? But my goodness! Perhaps it skipped your attention, but we're having a blizzard. I don't see how you'll get back there. <laughs> I know. But, well, I know. I, for one, would be quite sorry to see you go. I've been hearing such good things about your work. And of course, Candela Mays, who is directing the audition, knows every agent in Hollywood. Do you have an agent in Hollywood, Eddie? Let's get back to work. What about the slasher? Let him get his own agent. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait for you to hear the show. It's Devoon! Simply Devoon. And I have a bunch of all worked out, even down to the open night party. We'll hold it, we'll hold it at size, naturally. And if we charge the actors just a teensy cover charge, we'll break even. Oh, sorry, you're decorated. <laughs> oh, my! So, bookcase has been turned. Did anyone move a pen holder? Oh, I, I guess I did that. A secret passage, Elsa? To where does it lead? Two other passages. The house is laced with them. My goodness, Nancy Drew would be in seventh heaven here, wouldn't she, Elsa? <laughs> you never told me about this, never. Oh, then, nothing, Marjorie. Just your average, ordinary, everyday secret passageways. <laughs> Was this a stop on the Underground Railway or something? No. <laughs> then why? My father, who built this house, was Baron Wilhelm von Grossen Newton. Ah, oh, yes. You heard of him? But uh, wasn't there a motion picture about him? With Eric von Stroheim? Or might be thinking of someone else. Someone else. Though he was a legend, there was no motion picture on him. Obviously, I have him mixed up. He built this house when he left Germany at the end of the war. He was a general? He was the Kaiser's chief of espionage and the most brilliant intelligence mind in all of European history. He was a spy? You have heard, perhaps, of the Dreyfus papers? The Colonel read a letter? The Kruger telegram? The Von Moltke notes? The Hasselhoff memo? The Von Emmett shopping list? <laughs> <laughs> Events which changed the course of history with my father at their center, surrounded by an atmosphere of secrecy, stealth, and subterfuge. But why the secret passageways? It was the only way he could leave the room. Is all our company met? Kel, darling, how do you moon? Marjorie, honey. <laughs> Kids, this is Ken de la Maze, your director. Whom haven't you met, Ken? Hi, I'm, I'm Eddie McEwen, and I just did Elsa Fox. Eddie, we'll get to work shortly, but... Excuse me, Commander Frau. But I cannot find the meat cleaver. <laughs> you need a meat cleaver for the hors d'oeuvres, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you need it. My home is yours, everyone. Make yourselves comfortable. I'll be right back. You're sure you need a meat cleaver, Elsa? Jawohl. <laughs> oh, Ken, darling, look! A secret pass? 
sausage! So it is! Very like the one I just used in the circular staircase with Paulette Garner, Blair Krieger, Judith Anderson, Lionel Atwell, uh, Peter Lorre, and John Carradine. Oh, I saw it! Kevin, this is some of your best work! It hasn't been released yet. <laughs> now, Cass, as I was saying, we will get to work shortly. But in the meantime, although this is only a backwards audition from Audience of One, it is still theater. So, any questions of character or interpretation you have, bring them out. Theater is nothing less than life, distilled to a pure, clear ring of truth. Oh, quick! Summer, a martini! I'm in danger of frostbite! Bobby, darling, you look to moon! Simply to moon! Marjorie, sweetheart, love your new word! Oh, let me introduce. <laughs> Actors, this is Bobby Hopewell. There to do your music, Bobby. Miss Cranberry, Mr. McEwen, Mr. O'Reilly. Ken! I didn't even see you! How wonderful to be working with you again. You know, I was just saying to Bernice on the way here, now our script will have distilled truth and clean rings and new spark plugs and all those wonderful things that Ken does so well. <laughs> and you're the comic. Right. You've seen me over. Oh no. I merely assumed that was why you had your one overshoe. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I must have that routine. How about our performers? Dare you have a drink before attempting to entice Elsa of her money? No, thank oh, you. you. Out of my shot of bourbon, if you got Hi, hey! Bobby, darling! Bernice, you're looking wonderful. I oh, missed you, kid. You got in a bracelet, I see. Come have a drink with us, Bernice. I'm having a tea martini. In that case, I'll have a huge, huge manhood. This cast is Bernice Rob, your librettist. Your cast. Martini time. Hi, gang! Sorry I'm leaking downstairs, but the storm froze the lock from our overnight case, and I've been upstairs heating with a candle. Heating the lock? And the candle kept dripping wax in the rug, so it moved into the closet and set something on fire. Set what on fire? Well, see, I don't know, because whenever it was burnt up, then the maid comes in while I'm kneeling on the floor in the closet under this raging fire. I want to know if I'm Haitian. His eyes are very blue. Ain't it something to be with all these famous people? I guess so. Ken, you're a tan. It only costs one soul. <laughs> Maybe cost us hours. Bernice and I have been asked about a motion picture later this year. You know who Abbott and Costello are? Those two guys in the Bobby Clark thing? Streets of Paris? Yeah, well, Universal signed them, and we've been approached about some songs. Oh, that reminds me, the lead dancer from that show, The Boy, Grover Champion. Yeah, we're champion. <laughs> we should think about him. I know you're only in first draft, Bernice. But think about taking that long, long, long section where that sailor is telling that girl how beautiful she is and how making it into a ballet. I didn't think that section was all that long. <laughs> Ever notice in Bernice's writing, whenever someone tells a woman how beautiful she is, the scene seems to go on forever? That comes from understanding romance, Bobby! A subject which you are somewhat hazy on. Oh. That comes from writing in front of that smoke mirror you've got hanging over your desk is what it comes from. <laughs> oh, come on, Kate. Let's get to work. <laughs> Go 
growl, but your cook called and is snuggy. Bat! <laughs> yes, correct. Uh, well, there is nothing for it, but I shall go into the kitchen myself and whip up a quick lunch for you all. You don't want you hungry for the big show, do we? Come, Elsa, let us see if we remember how to do sour rotten. Sour rotten? Oh, how inspired! She's chosen a dish that, even if she ruins, no one could tell the difference. <laughs> I suggest we get started with rehearsals, which is the reason we're here. Is it? Hasn't anyone wondered why this particular creative group has been gathered in this particular house? A backwards audition. Hmm. Featuring the team whose last pepper was Manhattan Holiday, the show during which Beanie McAllister, Elsa's friend, was murdered. Need another drink, Ken? You look as though you need one. It's just the memory of that horrible time. I hoped it was forgotten. Obviously it isn't. Though Elsa is eccentric, though she slithers through life as though she were Gail Sondergaard, her behavior today strikes me as more batty than usual. As if that's possible. <laughs> and I believe we've been gathered here for a dual purpose. Which is? She wants to observe us. Together. To what end? Excuse me, but who was Margaret? Were you in New York two years ago? Two years ago I was off visiting your mither in County Cork. <laughs> You're visiting a mither? <laughs> Someone killed three members of her dancing chorus. And you suspect this killer was a member of the show? We don't know. Of course we know. We play New Haven, a murder. Boston, a murder. New Pen mm? Philadelphia? Terrible reviews. And a murder closes us in New York. Someone with the show, Ken. Someone with the show. And you suspect this killer to be in this house? Yes. I'm sorry, but you're not after knowing much about murders. They may occasionally be drawn back to the scene of the crime, but they never, once they are free and away, never would they intentionally associate themselves with anyone who could possibly have reason to suspect them. How do you know so much about murderers? You know, feather, your feather's feather. <laughs> God rest their soul. <laughs> We're police officers. And you're a tenor? I still think that's why we've been gathered here. Sounds like a party game. Miss Hopewell, murder is never quite so interesting. Real life is sudden and filled with rage. Quite emotional. Quite <coughs> messy. No secret passages. Just blood soaked carpets. My blood soaked carpets! Excuse me? I thought I heard something about blood soaked carpets. We were talking about real life, Halsa. Though heavens know why, as we are here to put on a musical comedy. Father McGrosser Newton has asked me to tell you land will be served in about 30 minutes. In the meantime, there are hors d'oeuvres. I still suggest we get started with rehearsals, which, Bobby, is the only reason we are gathered here. Just thought it worth mentioning again. Well, if you believe that to be a killer news, best not to stand in front of the bookcase. It's a secret passage. <gasps> Woo! Good heavens! Are we going to work, or shall we all get in pajamas and continue to tell ghost stories? Actors, over here. Bobby and Bernice at the piano. Besides, I have no breakfast, Mr. O'Reilly, since you're so interested in things charming. <laughs> Bernice, have you decided? Bernice? <laughs> have you decided how much of the book we're going to do, what? Bernice? What? The book! Bernice! What? Is this silliness? <laughs> Of Bobby's frightening you? Oh no! Of course not! I was just thinking. We have nothing to be afraid of here, my goodness. I mean, we're warm and cozy in a lovely, old, kind of weird house with secret passages and lots of curtains and so isolated by a snowstorm. I'm afraid I have a rather troubling announcement. I hope that none of you have to reach New York anytime soon. Because
because the phone seems to have gone dead. And the phone seems to have gone dead. <laughs> wow! Rotary Party! Wow! Please! 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 Get on to the second act. It's already four and Elsa wants to see this before dinner. I gotta say I'm mad about a dog. Oh, me too. But maybe some coffee. Ooh, yes. yes. Coffee sounds like a good idea. Okay, okay, ten minutes. Look so far, Mr. Del Always. It's coming. Excuse me, but would anyone be off for wanting anything? Go into the kitchen for a split of what chicken. I love some. See if she has any tea. You know what? No, nah, never mind. I'll cut myself. Mr. Della Banks, I noticed you skipped over the part where the taxi driver does an imitation of the Japanese ambassador. Well, you don't have to skip it if you don't want to. I think Bobby and Bernice have Bert Lahr in mind for the role of the cab driver. See, I do Japanese. It needs a name in there, you understand? I was just thinking it would add flavor. I'd be unfair not to tell you that's the direction they're heading. Are you surprised I speak our language? I was educated at UCRA. Hey! <laughs> Your talent is just as special as Lars, but I believe it's distilled from a different kind of truth. <laughs> there will probably be other roles that will bring closer to the quality you project. Okay? Sure. Thanks a lot, Mr. Della Maze. What'd he say? He said no. No, heck. Even if I am just the second banana, this could be the break I've been waiting for. Are you excited about this? They usually get stars for the stuff I'm reading, don't they? Well, you never know. You live in New York. Yes. Whereabouts? <laughs> West 64th, between Broadway and Amsterdam. Yeah, I've been bought 50 at the cross from Madison Square Garden. I used to live near there. 48, the dance belt. You live alone? I have two roommates. Got a boyfriend? We did have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's not bad. I was thinking of making an option to run for it drafted. <laughs> Aren't you a bit old to be drafted? Well, um. I was thinking maybe I should join. I would get into the show business, PDQ, so that if I am drafted, I can get into the entertainment section of the army. You want to kill them with glass, huh? <laughs> they got such units. A comics battalion. Yeah, they hit the beach right after the magicians. It's called <laughs> special services. Uh huh, and they pass out ping pong balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if you were a dancer, even if you never said so. Yeah? Talk straight out. Kind of like a yeah. Most dames don't do that, but dancers do. Of course, I'm talking showbiz, not ballet. You date a lot of dancers? I don't date a lot of anything. <laughs> you <laughs> not a girl? Nope. See, most dames, they don't want to get serious with a comic. <coughs> That's okay. That's just the way things are laid out. What's laid out? Your gets a girl, comic is lost. In the movies? And in real life. It's Pretty much the same thing. I want to know. I haven't met any heroes. Met any comics? Just one. I want to take a look at that second act about it. <laughs> you believe in uh, chemistry? <laughs> <laughs> you know, to look at someone and something happens. I don't know. <laughs> well, What's happening here? <laughs> oh, I am the maid. Oh, we are starting to see the beginning of a hot affair. They really got eyes for each other. Yeah, maybe they have something in common. You believe in chemistry? <laughs> Never happened to me. <sighs> yeah. How about your boyfriend? We grew up together. He was just always there. Till now. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it never happened to me either. Probably just in the movies. No, it happened to my father. It did? Yeah. She was on the bus, he was on the corner, they saw each other, wham! He chased that bus for five blocks. <laughs> it was your mother? No, some girl. Never saw her again. He used to tell me, hey, when it happens, you'll know. It's chemical. Just open eight number 17 to Ozone Park. That's an express. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it can happen. Just gotta be looking for it, that's all. Shall we get back to work? So how's y'all doing? Miss Von Rossen wanted me to lay in some coffee here for you. We just had coffee. So you boy had to go into the kitchen. She probably just wants us out of the way while she learns to light the oven. Huh. <laughs> so, y'all in the show business, huh? Yeah. You uh, <laughs> ever attend the theater? Mr. Uh... Kelly! No, not that much. I had a cousin in the hot mikado at the World's Fair, though. Dinner! Such as it is. <laughs> we'll be around seven. The time you all were, I'll have Elsa bring in some meter crumbs. We're fine, Elsa. Please, don't worry about us. Now? Excuse me, I need some coffee. 
Well, the stage manager was at the theater. I remember because the set designer and I stopped by before going to dinner at Tuffin Inn's. Oh, could it have been Ken? The stage manager was with me at the Blue Ribbon. No, Marjorie, I remember distinctly. It was the first dark I night. certainly ought to know where my own stage manager was, Ken. <laughs> Calm down, Marjorie. Why are you so upset? An alibi, obviously. <gasps> no! The note doesn't say the theater. It says the hotel. The night she was murdered, she had an appointment at the hotel. With whom? No one was there. We only use the suite as a staffer. Why don't we take a look at the book? I think it better if I turn the book over to the police in the morning. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Von Brossen. Uh, New Inn? Yes? Well, maybe you should put that book in a safe place and as far from you as possible, because if, if it connects the murders to the killer, he would kill to get it. But he doesn't know I have it. Now, does he? Well, he does now. Really? Mr. McEwen, for that to be true, the killer would have to be in this room.
going through a typical attack of paranoia. <laughs> Marjorie, honey, we're friends here. I mean, if you've got something to say, let's say it now and not sit there acting like a typical producer. Someone pull the big power! Has anyone? Conservatory, you know. I think this exposure on the lines. 
Sergeant? Killer is working too fast. He didn't go for you in the book. He went for someone who obviously could expose him somehow, and not just once. We've had two murderers so far. Maybe three. Maybe four for including O'Reilly. Who is maybe three? They're bloodstains by the French school. But nobody else is missing. Nobody else we know about. <coughs> you mean there could be somebody missing who wasn't even here in the first place? Well, but if you're the police, what was all that business about notifying them in regards to Phoebe's book? A setup. I was to be the bait, Bobby. And when the killer came for me, and the notebook, the sergeant would capture him. Clever, yes? It was, <laughs> until you told us all about it. Obviously, the killer went for some other people who are more dangerous to them than this book. Maybe it's a combination of that book and the other people that worry the killer. With them out of the way, the book is useless. That's exactly how I got a peg in this. Well, I still maintain we should examine these. The chase is half the fun. Let me get this straight. All that nonsense about Phoebe's book was just made up in order to... The, the book case. is the real McCoy. It was sent to the department from Princeton last week, and it contains information that made us reopen the case. What sort of information? Look at the last entry. Piccadilly, tent, wind. That's it! What's it, Bernice? I just got the new second act opening! Triplets, but Zara in Germany. 
Come this way. Also, someone who looks very like you was murdered here this afternoon. I will look. Come this way. My mother and father worked in Berlin as laborers for the government printing plant. In 1923, they, they died when a carton which contained marks equivalent of five American dollars landed on them when they were crushed. My sisters and I were raised by relatives. We only saw each other on one ash and to decorate one ash bomb and give out one ash Gesundheit! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite it. I don't know my sisters. No sense of humor. Did Helsa accompany you out of town during Manhattan holiday? No. Helsa was here at the house. My gosh. Identical triplets? A homicidal maniac? Secret passages? Yeah, it's beginning to look like one of those Hollywood <coughs> mysteries you direct Mr. Delamay's. I didn't know you directed a mystery, Ken. One, murder at the Billmore with Myrna Loy, Sidney Blackner, Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> Not Pendleton, Louise Albritton, uh, and Elisha Cook Jr. Has that been released? No. Have you seen it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't think she looks a thing like me. But <laughs> Elsa. She's the spitting image. Was one of her sisters ballet dancer by any chance? Dancers? Got in Himmelnook. Himmel lives in Strassen, where she works in a boatyard making sails. Helga lives in Stuttgart, where she makes table in a beer garden. Now, if you will excuse me, I must get back to the dinner. You're saying that's not your sister out there. Anything is possible, but I believe my sister to be in Germany. That woman is an exact likeness. My girl's was a merchant seaman at the Bremen. Perhaps he put the shore in Brooklyn. It's only a train right here. He's <laughs> Mr. O'Reilly is dead also? We don't know. I told you she had eyes for him. Two murders. All she's concerned for. Alright. Obviously, Helsa is lying. But I can't imagine why. She's covering for him. I thought espionage was in your blood. It is. It's just a little sluggish at the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe her sister was on her way here and was killed before Helsa knew she arrived. Then why wouldn't she identify her? Perhaps Helsa's sister is the slasher. If Helsa's sister is the slasher, then who slashed her? Oh, it's all too confusing. No, it's simple. Look, you got a sister who's a servant in Chipapa, a sister selling sausage in Sauerkraut and Stuttgart, and a sister selling sales somewhere. Strassland. So, either killed from Stuttgart or hung up from Strassland while seeing your sister in a snowstorm in a swanky secluded section of Chipapa is at my house at the half of Who thinks Hubble or Helga is Helsa? <laughs> now, ask yourself, why? <laughs> <laughs> ask myself, why? I don't even know what you just said. Ask myself, why what? No, why what? Why who? Why who what? No, why <laughs> what? Why why what? <laughs> why, why, who, what, why? What? Because before you ask who, you have to ask what. And how. How what? I was just agreeing. And how. Maybe. <laughs> it depends on when. When? What? Could Elsa be the stage door slasher? I mean, it's what we're all thinking, right? Oh, it's what we're all thinking. But why would Elsa murder three women? Jealousy. Of whom? Of you and your friends, of course. You said you had many. I said Phoebe had many. Really, Bobby? If you're going to take the thoughts of others and twist them, I prefer you stick to your own current. You do that so much better. <laughs> I do not steal from Jerome Kirk. He certainly does not. Thank you, Bernice. It's even Robert. Oh, 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 fine, fine. Let's all be viciously funny about my talent. It strikes me as an exceptionally transparent attempt to get us off the subject. 
which is which one of us might have had a motive. All right. Shall we begin with the well-known fact that you hate dancers? Oh, I do not hate dancers. I hate them when they sing. You did demand those three girls be removed from the numbers. <laughs> but not with a knife! My point is, we could come up with a motive for any of us, but I don't think the killer is in this group. What about O'Reilly? He may be dead. Or in those tunnels. Well, we won't know if we don't look. I'm going to serve dinner, and then I suggest an armed foray into those walls. There is another possibility. What if Helsa is her sister? What? Just something that happened earlier. Something different. Okay. Now I want to get solved on this thing. I want to reconstruct the moment before the crime. So, I want all of you to show me where you were standing before the black house. You've got to be kidding. No, this can work. Ellery Coyne does it all the time. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's try it. I was here. Bernice, where were you? I was there in the chair. We were here. And poor Marjorie was over there. Hmm. 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 Well, this doesn't tell me a flippin' thing! <laughs> I am going to go into the kitchen because I don't think we should let Elsa alone with Elsa. Wait a second, Ben. I don't think you the new sick that bill. Wait, but Bernice, but I thought what we had originally was fine. Marjorie hated it. Marjorie was dead, Bernice. I don't think you should let a dead woman's opinion influence you. <laughs> I can't believe one of them could be the smasher. No, I doubt they are. And I, and I got me a whole other gear. Come to the kitchen. In a sec, you find something interesting. It's addresses, appointments, a kind of log. She refers to things she's done this day. See, LN small w slash K. Lunch with Kathy, another dancer on the show. You already checked those notes out. Well, one that can make sense of anyone. I think it's a code. Code? Why would she keep a code? Every so often there's nothing but a list of numbers. Phone numbers. But there's not always an exchange. Here's Endicott, Murray Hill, but then rows of numbers. It's a code. Bank accounts, maybe. Secret bank accounts. Yeah, maybe. <coughs> I got me a whole other theory, and it's based off of plain old fashioned police work. Hey, maybe serial numbers. Observation. Observation. That's the key. And if I'm right, and someone could be in very great danger. And I think I know who that someone is. Maybe the numbers are the letters of the tunes. Or the one about that. When you were a kid, you ever sent away to Orphan Annie or Jack Armstrong for a secret decoder? Don't want to swap the name. I got one. Well, I'll use the Orphan Annie system. Let's try and break it. What we need is paper. Holy mackerel! The desk door! Hey, sorry! Where'd my, my gosh, another tunnel! This joint has more surprises than some of our other. There are steps leading down. Are you crazy? Don't go in there. I want to see what's down here. If you run into the slasher, don't play. It looks like a white sound. <laughs> Great. Now come back up. I can't believe you're doing this. When there's a kid on this! I mean, there's someone, maybe a raving maniac in the house with an eye for a saber. You're down there in the dark instead of staying up here in the light. Say!
by that razor. Let's go tell the others. No, it could be one of them. He was after this, but I grabbed and ran. You did? Jimmy, you're kind of brave. No, just best. See, when he plays in the joints, I play. Which one of them do you think it is? Well, I got a theory. Based on observation. <laughs> oh, Riley! We thought you were dead! Ah, uh, sure, and so did somebody else. I was hit on me head and laughed to die. When was this? When I was gone for the aspirin. Have you got a chance to take it? When I come to, I find myself in the tunnels. I've had the devil's own time trying to get out. There have been two murders here. And what's more, it isn't even an audition. Except to catch the slasher. Murders? Who? <laughs> <laughs> this favor stuff, it's someone who's either Hilda Helga or Halsa. Was? Someone who we think is Halsa's sister. Fell right out of that closet. Your sister, was it? Halsa? Is she alright? Yeah. <laughs> She's all right. <laughs> you know, she was worried about you, too. Faith that she's a fine soup of a loss. But even I'll have a spot of brandy, pour it off the chair. Sit still, I'll get it. So, so, how long have you been in this country, Mr. O'Reilly? What? I asked how long you've been in America. You are Irish-born? Us potties call. And where in Ireland are you from? Here in your familiar with Ireland, Colleen. I've never been there, no. Ah, well, there's a spot in County Barney, which the sun <laughs> coming over the McNamara Mountains hits first. We are in the fine village of McGillicotty <laughs> to another of God's days, and so are that I'm from, and are that I'll ever be. I don't think he's Irish. <laughs> we could have been here all night. Sharon, it's as warm and as a bog at peak in August. <laughs> Have I seen you anything in Broadway, Mr. O'Reilly? Yeah, I did a walk of ass, we miss. <laughs> Dinner is served. Mr. O'Reilly, you return to us. You sit on his head not to die. Oh! 
just try to stop her. Believe me. We can't just stand there and do nothing. Sure we can. <laughs> your smile. Use Pepsodent twice a day. I can't understand a thing you're saying. 
you see the maiden there? I don't know. It's too dark to see anything. Uh, Halsa's the stage door slasher. Halsa? Wait a minute, she's in there? With Nikki? I'll take care of this. Hold it! This is a job for the police. But he is the police. Lieutenant Tony somebody. Yeah, he's working on the slasher case. Out of where? Headquarters. What division? Eerie Crimes. <laughs> Eerie Crimes. Division. Oh yeah, so yeah. Who think the commission is just? You got an ID? Of course he's got an ID. He just showed it to us. Okay, pal. Let's see a badge. Sure. Arms up. Let's move on. Over there. Move. Move. Schneid. You're the guy who took my badge, right? You're the guy who conked me on the head, right? Almost walked. To double match, they are spoiled everything. Oh, hey, hey, just a minute. I can't find that cop. Oh, careful, Elsa. <laughs> no, no. Hello, everyone. <laughs> What's going on? He's Mr. O'Reilly. He's not all right. I'm close, stands to up, sick of Heimstar's poison. Dog, stop him! <laughs> 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 German country in New York. It's cultural cachet. What's the Gestapo want with the city store slasher? I want to do something, Kelly. So take the candle and see the way. Let's do the closet. Not in your life. With the Sergeant Kelly. Could have easily killed you before, but I didn't. Why not? Professional courtesy. So take the candle. No! Suggest the best to turn your head. The bullet from the scan is quite a large hole. Don't make a move, daddy -o, or you'll be pushing up daisies. And to Nicole Crater, United States Naval Intelligence. We're going to need some rope. Oh, and the baby! I'll get it! I'll go with her. She should not be alone. Um, well, well, I'm not staying here with all these guns waiting around. Bernice! Scotch and soda. Oh, never mind! Up against the piano, crowdhead! Where's your learn to do that? Basic training? Yeah, that's pretty basic, basic all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it from here. Naval intelligence. Well, I'll be darned. We've been after this guy for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of spy or something? Worse, he's a saboteur. His name is Dieter Wenzel. Loves the wrong man. Wenzel? Ah. Shut your trap. <laughs> Wenzel. <coughs> the Nazis landed this guy and five others on Long Island three weeks ago. We got four of them posing as novelists inside Harvard. My name is Klaus Stansdorf. Baloney! The saboteurs had false identities, a half million dollars, and admission to blow up installations all across our country to effectively retard a nation's communication system. Gee, and I thought the post office was taking care of that. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy and a guy named Franz Becker decided the money was more important than the fatherland and took off with the dough right me. So where's this guy's buddy Becker? The cat's in jammer, kid. Here, bumped him off with the greenbacks. Right, Tritz? Hey, who you call a dumb call? Oh, I have got a doom cough. You are called bubble nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to get that straight. So how'd you get on this guy's trail? See, Naval Intelligence knew we had a sister. We figured it was a long shot, but he might head for her. They sent you alone against a killer? I was the only who could sing harmony. <clears throat> Listen to me, all of you. Your lives are in great danger. Okay, pal. They're all leaders. I am not Dieter Wenzel. Dieter Wenzel is an officer in Albia. German military counter intelligence. Also, he's a homicidal maniac. A homicidal maniac? How to get in the German army? We recruited him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's Doing all the killing? Of course. 
And where is he? This. Well, 
closet, and she held up a butcher knife, and we slammed the door in her face. She could be telling the truth then. If she is, I think we should get out of this house. The lizard, or no lizard. If she is, it makes it all the more important we crack this code. What's it say about the knife the word? Piccadilly, 1020, Tutu, Toshu's, Leo, Corn. What's another word for corn? No, no, no. But I'm the only one with any knowledge of these passages. I have to go. It's too dangerous for a woman. Not with this. The danger which General Von Grossenuten used when he was the personal bodyguard to the Archduke Ferdinand. <laughs> You know how to use that thing? Sergeant, I have shot the O out of every stop sign in Westchester County. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough for me. Okay, here's the plan. Listen, everyone, we've broken part of the code in Phoebe's book. Here's what it says the night of the murder. Piccadilly, 1020, 22, Toshu's, Leo, Corn. What's another word for corn? What well, is corn? Well, we think it could be a word substitute. You think? She was a dancer, right? She must have had corn or something. Okay, here's the plan. We take three passages out of here. One gun to the passage. The fourth gun stays here in case the fiend, or whatever it is, comes out of the walls. Elsa, you take that passageway. Eddie, you pull me out of those walls pretty good. Take this. I'm going through there. Hey, if this doesn't have a flag that pops up and says bang, I don't know what to do with it. Ensign, <laughs> <laughs> you stay here. I oh, yeah, sir. I want to keep working on this code anyways. <clears throat> Is there any place the passages don't leave? The pantry. Okay, you three going through there. That way you'll be safe. Yes. Safety is exactly what I had in mind. Come on, Bernice. Moving on. Oh, good. Anything open this week? All set. Let's go. Be careful. It's a maze in there. Hey, uh, are you going to be okay? Yeah, are you going to be okay? I asked you first. Hey, if I'm not back in 24 hours, Kiss my Android. Bobby and Bernice are all tucked in, surrounded by young hands. <coughs> Let's just hope they don't get into a fight over a lyric. Couldn't you stay with them? I thought I should be here with you. You've got quite a job watching three secret passages at once. Thanks. Still working on that book. These foods as word substitutes. I just can't figure them. Another code. And not to be used forever, I'm afraid. Yeah. I must congratulate you, Ensign, on your performance. As a chorus girl, quite detailed, quite convincing, too. The appearance, the walk, trip over the suitcase was an excellent choice. Well, actually, that was me. Oh, and your language, swell, so typical crass, the ring of pure banal truth. Well, actually, that was me as well. See. I was a hopeful, you know, knocking around in the great white way before I joined the Navy. Hmm. Did you, by chance, audition for me? I don't know, Mr. De La Mies. I went to so many auditions. Maybe one of them was for you. Let's see, did you direct? I think I might have singled you out. Oh, I doubt that. As different from the rest. Different? What, you don't see yourself as different from the tawdry, shop-worn, self-involved, run-of-the-mill chorus girl? No, I thought most of them were pretty nifty. The chase must be going badly. I would have expected to hear shots ringing from the walls by now. Hold on, maybe I did audition for you. Did you direct I Married an Angel? That was Josh Logan. Let's see. 
Boys from Syracuse. George Abbott. Sing out the news, who's who? Leonard Stillman, Charlie Friedman. Who's who people? What? She was substituting words for people. She was probably keeping appointments that she didn't want anyone to know about. Anyone being Elsa, naturally. So that night, it was Corn Piccadilly 1020. Who was Corn? What's another word for Corn? Corn? Corny? Another comedian in the show, maybe. What's another word for Corn? Oh my gosh! Philo Vance would have gotten it much sooner, my pretty. Now, you and I will take a swell trip. Oh, Matthew, Bernice needs another drink! So I've been elected to. What is going on here? Don't do anything foolish, Bobby. I don't want to deal with this. I absolutely refuse to deal with this. I suppose you think I'm crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. Ken, I have no intention of getting dragged into a psychological discussion with you. I have not know I'm not going to secure enough myself to hear about your problems. Tired of picking this 
one up off the floor. <laughs> I need some coffee. Did she get the rope? Oh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> Listen, I really prefer being a comic than being a hero, because when you're a hero, you spend all of your time scared out of your wits. But I better go back in those tunnels and tell Kelly you caught the slasher. And the saboteur. Yeah, but what, what about the scissors sell sausage? All right, I'll be right back. Maybe you should put another knot in that. Where is everybody? Wait, if Ken is the stage door slasher, then who killed I me? did. Be quiet. Don't scream, and you may not get hurt. I know you have gun and identification as an intelligence officer. Well, I said, I also know what you are thinking. You are thinking, this woman is smaller than I am, and I am trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> Nazi 
saboteur. Hausa, a saboteur? Only it's not Hausa. It's her brother, Dieter, a female impersonator. I do Dieter, not Taylor, Josephine Baker. Really? Do you do Judy Garland? No, her voice is too rangy for me. Huh, really? <laughs> I would have thought if you did load up Lenya. Well, Lenya is more of a chess voice. Well, Garland. It's true, Garland is all head to Could we please leave the musical discussion for another day? I'm gonna lock these two up. I warn you, I have connections in very high places. I know Harry Khan and Jack Warner personally. I eat lunch with Luella Parsons. Come on, you. Unknown actors today, but one day they're not sitting for political greatness. Well, maybe when they get elected into office, they can appoint you into their cabinet. They will! They will! <laughs> Gee, we captured this last row and a Nazi saboteur? We'll probably make Mitchell. For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. May I restore to the world? I mean, the success of our adventure calls for a celebration. Why don't we all prepare to the kitchen for great flambe von Grossen Newton? That's not made with corn, is it? Corn? Corn! Of course, that's it, Bobby! What's it? We're wrong setting our show in Washington. These are terrible times! Times for a musical that celebrates the spirit of America! The cowboys, the cornfields, those stories we thought were a little stuff on top. Our next musical should take place in Nebraska! <gasps> N-E-B-R-A-S-K-A! The Navy will be proud of you, Nicole. I intend to write Eleanor about you. And as for you, Mr. McEwen, I'm sorry this is not a real audition. Otherwise, you certainly would have gotten the part. That's okay. He got the girl. He did? I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can I resist a guy who goes flying out of walls every time I need him? I gotta warn you, I'm not a hero naturally. No one's a hero naturally. Anyhow, I'm not concerned about hooks. I'm concerned about chemistry. No, but I got covered. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you inherited it. see all the, well, to hear the laughter out there and see you guys doing such a great job up here. We do have, uh, this is the last show. Uh, some of our cast members are seniors this year. We have a couple gifts for them, and I, I feel like I'm carrying a wine glass and a wine bottle at the same time. Bernice has it down. Uh, that is for, that goes with your dress, so we'll give those to you. And that is, uh, so Talia, congratulations, thank you so much. You've been part of our, I mean, every single year you've been in our show, and we really appreciate it. And this is for Isabel Riley, your first show, and... Yeah. 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 